Hello everyone, my name is Kurt Mendy Andras from Hungary, but here we, and here it's changed to Andrew Kurt Mendy, dropped the two dots over the O to make the pronunciation easier. I grew up under the Iron Curtain, the Soviet bloc, hum, communism under the Hungarian ruling and leadership. Of course, I was a kid that born in 1956, there was revolutionary times in Hungary, the Russian troops that came in in 1945. The communism established 1949. They were fed up after a while, and the year it was 1956, and Hungary had a revolution, and they actually won temporarily, and they kicked out the Russian troops. And about 150,000 Russian troops came in a couple of weeks after, and they crushed the Hungarian revolution. Although Hungary asked for military aid and financial aid, America denied them because at that time there was also a matter of problem in, uh, I believe, in Egypt by the Suez Canal assisted them, but not Hungary. This is the turbulent time of 1956, when I was born, my parents tried, you know, made the first attempt to escape, and they pulled me on a sled through the snow fields, and, but I had an earache infection, and my father changed his mind middle of the way. I said, I don't want my son to have some sort of ear problem in the future, and we turned back, and we had to redo this uh, in 1968, where we succeeded. The Russian troops stayed all the way until 1989. I'll give you one example of, of communism and you know Hungarian rule is that when I was in the fifth and sixth grade, we had to take the language of Russian. It was mandatory, and unfortunately, I did not pass. It was in my cup of tea to be strong in foreign languages, and I did not pass. And when we were planning our trip out from Hungary to Yugoslavia and Italy, I needed the principal's permission to leave the country. So this is one example of communism. My father was a fruits and vegetable man all his life, and one of the reasons he planned the escape and come out of the country because he sold, for instance, mushroom for a set price, beyond the set price by the government, and he was then illegally arrested because selling it for more money than the government allowed. He tried to explain to them that he used, you know, horse and buggy to move the, uh, the produce up, and, you know, the horse needs food, obviously, and something got spoiled, something got crushed. When you talk about moving, like mushrooms or a soft item, he was illegally arrested. So this, is, this was the catalyst, this was the main reason why my father wanted to leave and take us out of the country. One of the interesting things in the 1960s, for instance, if a group of adults or teenagers would get together, about a half a dozen or so, and socialize and talk, it was very often that the police showed up and asked, where is your work paper, where do you work? How can you be here at 2 p.m. in the afternoon? How come you don't work? In the minds of the police, they, these people may be planning an overthrow of the communist government. Another interesting aspect of living under the communist government was the radio for Europe. So if you were sneaky and you had to listen to the radio for Europe, you had to put your ears next to the speakers. And if you would be caught or a neighbor would report you, you could have, you know, it could be locked up, you could be questioned. Also back in the 1960s, the U.S. American Embassy, U.S. Embassy was open to the general public to come in to, to visit and see things there. I saw a movie, America at Nighttime, and, you know, the Broadway, the 42nd Street, and the, the skyscrapers, and in my mind, America was like that all across. My father difficulty, you know, establishing himself to, to get better life in Hungary, wanted better for the children. After my mother's uncle passed away, we inherited a very small amount of money and we did passport work and visas and uh, you know, clothing and plan was on for my brother to go to Sofia, Bulgaria. My mom and I and my father went to Yugoslavia and then from there a chauffeur drove us across the border and I was hiding under the guitar case. And obviously I started to Trieste, Italy and eventually to Rome. We were, had to wait in Rome for four months for a worldwide organization of its highest to guarantee for my mom and dad a physical you know, working place, which was in Kansas City. And we wind up happily escaping to come to the uh, land of freedom and opportunity, and it was a right thing to do. And it's a, always remember, it's a privilege to be in this country. We had to leave behind friends and family because the plan of escape was only for four. And it was the only years after that I dared to go back. It was 1977, still a communist bloc. So when we first arrived in New York City, our relatives sponsored us to stay you know, one to two weeks before going to Kansas City. And we were amazed to go into supermarkets and abundance of food and cheese selection and deli counters. And it was a sight to behold. It was really great. 
and we were big bread eaters. That was the European way, the East European way. So we finished about one loaf of bread a day, like a pound of bread, you know, like two slices for breakfast each of us. So family for a slice of breakfast are gone. Lunch was a repeat. You know, there had been some coke or some bologna and mustard on the bread. Another eight slices were gone. And same thing evening, doesn't matter what food we had, usually eat one or two slices each of us. So we finished a loaf of bread a day. So that was kind of the, the, the old ways that we were culturally brought up. Traveling, going from New York City to Kansas City, Missouri, was an interesting experience because we were looking out the windows and we were seeing wheat fields and corn fields and what we call the heart of America, you know, the heartland, and we hardly saw any, you know, Private houses were scattered, and uh, what I expected downtown and skyscrapers all over. There was only a small downtown compared to New York. So our expectations were different in Hungary about America and in Kansas City than what was really the reality. Now, when, when I came out, reminiscent and thinking back of my junior high school years, uh, I think that only seven grade in Kansas City, Missouri, it was a little hard to make friends. Uh, originally, I didn't speak a word of English, and I have to be very honest, I watched lots of cartoons, specifically Flintstones and Popeye, and that was my basis of, of learning English, believe it or not. And also at supermarkets, learning, and you see a box of tissue, and it says, you know, tissue box, 49 cents, you associate the box with the tissue, and that's begin to learn, you know, words. So in Kansas, we, I remember having a double gym period, like Tuesday double gym period, and Thursday double gym period. It was really great, because go out to the field and play softball. And I remember in memories that I was the last one to be picked. You know, the teacher would say, okay, two captains and pick you teams pick and I, will, I was always the last one to get picked. I was the foreign, I was the kid. In fact, there was only two foreigners, one girl from Czechoslovakia and I was the other foreigner kid, happened to be next door from Hungary. So, you know, growing up in Kansas, that year was uh, very difficult for me because I was just in a process of learning English and fitting in culture and making friends. My family had a copy, and I repeat that a copy, a three-fourths copy of the world-famous Stradivarius violin. And somehow my mom was able to find a wealthy person in Kansas City, Missouri, and we sold this violin to this person for about $620, and that was enough money, one lump sum, to bring us back to New York, and we restarted life in New York in the summer of 1969. And also at that time, I went down to a, a day camp, a Union Turn Park in Queens. My mom took me in, and I was told I'm one year too old to be a camper, because I was 13, not 12, but I could be a CIT, which stands for Counseling Training, and I wind up teaching swimming since 1969. So interestingly, uniquely, this summer, July of 2019, I could boldly say that I have 50 years of uh, total life experience teaching, teaching children. 1969 to 70, I attended Parsons Junior High School, 8th and 9th grade. And it was strange to go travel class to class, it was like new to me. Believe it or not, I was misguided by uh, the guidance teachers. I wound up being taken into or misted into Queens Vocational High School rather than Jamaica High School in Queens. So I attended the high school 10th, 11th, 12th grade and acquired a uh, basic diploma in what they call ele electrical wiring. And I left the field uh, as soon as I graduated and I enrolled myself in Queens College. Uh, and I picked major as PE, physical education. And I studied that for a few years. And I took a one year break from phys ed and it was a special pro program called SWS, standing for school within the school. Uh, based upon the open education philosophy of the summer school in England. And I became a elem licensed elementary school teacher, licensed from nursery through sixth grade, and phys ed was kindergarten through 12th grade. So that was my uh, achieving my college diploma and certificate. For along the way, I uh, met a nice girlfriend, and my parents and I came to Hungary, and we sponsored her, and she came out to America. We wound up getting married, and now we have two children, uh, Brian, who's 19 and currently attending uh, college, and my daughter, Tiffany, currently attending Stony Brook on a graduate level, and student teaching. Hopefully, it looks like following father's footsteps in the uh, teaching field. And just an interesting parallel, interesting uh, relationship, just like my parents wanted 
us Robert and I to have a good life in the land of freedom opportunity and be here and thank God we did we managed real nicely of course I want the same thing for my son and for my daughter and we wind up moving out from Queens from Briarwood Queens to Nassau area of uh, Long Island, specifically to East Meadow, where we managed to purchase a house in 2005. And I think I'd like to summarize and say and end that it has been a great life experience for me to be here. It has been an honor and a privilege giving this interview. And I think everybody should not forget that America is not some place where people can just waltz in or walk in that you have to be invited, that you have to be sponsored. It's a great privilege to be here. And whoever comes to this country should, of course, ob obey and abide by all the laws that set forth, regardless of what country or culture you came from. So we all have to assimilate and, and fit into the American society and culture. And I think I've done that very nicely for an immigrant kid with uh, absolutely no English behind me. So, you know, bottom line, if I can do it, somebody else can do it. It's just that he lets keep in mind that the, the, the proper and last term larger that it's a great honor and privilege to be here and live here and enjoy the lifetime freedom that America has to offer to us.